Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Forspoken Review from Gigaboots. I'm your host, Dan Video Games, and with me, we've got Dr. Agro, Bob Video Games, and Chris Wolfhart. I'm the ghost in the machine. <laughs> he certainly is, and we're here to talk about Forspoken. Full disclosure up front, we're shills who were given free copies. Not all four of us find out who didn't get the free copy later. But before we get oh, into... Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> but before we get into the full uh, nitty-gritty of exactly what our experiences were with First Spoken, we're going to do what we usually do on our spoiler cast and reviews. We're going to talk about our general feelings of the game distilled down into two sentences followed by some sort of mouth sound, which now has a visual component. Oh, no. Mm. <laughs> uh, for some of us. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, after doing that, we'll move on to the uh, nitty-gritty discussion with a number at the end anyways. Let's get to it. We're going to go ahead and start with Dr. Agro. Dr. Agro, tell me about Forspoken. Forspoken. Uh, was a groundbreaking blockbuster title released in 2007 <laughs> and somehow shunted through the time vortex <laughs> to vex me here in the year of our Lord, 2023. <laughs> Man. <laughs> uh, I guess next we'll go to Chris Wolfhart. Forspoken is a game for no one. There is not a single thing about this game that raises above functional boo. <laughs> Next up, Bob Video Games. I'm kind of impressed that there is nothing good in this game. I didn't expect that. Also, they made Final Fantasy 15 again, which I didn't think that they could do. Like, <laughs> any, anything even remotely close to. Mm. So I'm going to give it a... Oh. Oh. Okay, well, uh, I'm just gonna say, if Final Fantasy XV had a Mystic Quest-like pandering to Americans version, but somehow was vastly worse than Final Fantasy XV, Forspoken's it, baby. It doesn't rise above much of anything. I'm gonna give it a... What? And now we can move on to the nitty-gritty discussion. Uh, yeah, at some level, I just... When it became the setting is New York City, the setting is America, we do Western fantasy sort of stuff. Part of me did just go, this is this is Final Fantasy USA 2. <laughs> <laughs> Part of me just broke. Uh, I think that was really complimented by how much this game is kind of like infamous Second Son when it comes to these powers and abilities and combat and stuff. Mm. Oh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... Uh, where's the ending where Frey kills her grandma? Ooh! <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, wait. That sort of... Hmm. 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 I honestly did not expect this game to go like this. As I got into it, I thought there would be a number of different ways this would go, and I wouldn't just be feel left with this feeling of, if Infamous Second Son was a blown up its scale to this absolutely massive thing, and its uh, stats, like they added RPG-like stats like Sony's been doing with, you know, God of War and other things, but it felt awful to grind them, I feel like Forspoken's it. It's it's really Forspoken's really fascinating to see what occurred, but I can't say the experience of playing it is compelling in the least. I feel like no curiosity was sated with this game. <laughs> I feel like it has no value even as an intellectual experiment. Mm. It's just like, what if a studio that had been trained wrong made something with no leadership? <laughs> And then that train wrong is really where, where I think, because I think there's a lot of good in this game. Mm -hmm. If you write everything in this game down on a piece of paper <laughs> and slide it across the table, I'll pick it up and go, this is an amazing experience. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. they did every single part of it wrong. Yes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> it's, it's really fascinating because, you know, the world writing apparently is done by Gary Whitta and story concept, I believe, is done by Amy Hedig. But then the actual writing of the entire game is filled out by two, I, I, I think they're TV writers. And it's very interesting because- You can tell. Once, once again, it, that <laughs> parallels, when you think about that, that complements or pairs with the concept of what you were talking about of, on a framework, this game should be great. On a framework, there should be really compelling things here. 
but none of it is fleshed out. Like every time a cutscene would end, I would describe what just happened and went, this is compelling stuff. Why is it so bad? <laughs> yeah, it's almost like not having people properly animate or even interact right God, or act emphasis. well. Oh man. Yeah, it's, that all affects it. Yeah, as it turns out, it really does matter when all of your cutscenes have this incredibly slipshod energy. It's to the point where um, I think Dreams, the Sony game made by Media Molecule, where you can make your own game, has smoother cutscenes in most mm -hmm. of the Dreams than this does. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, a lot of this game had some real Sonic 2K6 energy of, I'm going to say a sentence, and we're going to load, uh -huh. and then I'm going to do an animation, and then we're going to load. The funny thing is, as I'm experiencing this, is, experiencing this, because I've only seen about five hours of Final Fantasy XV, I turn to Bob and I'm just like, why does this game keep cutting to black? Why does it keep fading to black? It faded to black something like three or four times in 22 seconds one time in a, a seamless cutscene. It wasn't like it was cutscene gameplay, cutscene gameplay. It just did that. And I'm like, why does it keep doing that? And he's just like, Final Fantasy 15 did that. And I'm like, so is this engine only <laughs> capable of making one game? Yes. I don't think it's capable of making <laughs> games. <laughs> I think Agra's onto something here. <laughs> <laughs> like, like through this whole process of me trying to figure out why all of these things that I thought were really cool weren't making a good game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I kept thinking, I frustratingly lack the engine and the technical expertise to really know if that's what's happening here. Right. It is hard to tell when it's the tools that are a problem like, or just- I'm like, is that why combat's bad? Because all, everything in the combat system, if you write it down, is amazing. <laughs> right. And then you see the combo video and you go, yeah, that's how this goes. This is the high level play here. And uh, you wish you would ascend above that. I think it's this is a very minor problem with the game. Mm -hmm. It's very baffling. They made cats such a huge part of this game when the Luminous <laughs> Engine just can't render anything that's covered in fur at all. Bob is the only good cat. <laughs> Every other cat is hideous. There's there's a couple of, I, I collected a bunch of the cats. Um, cool. Th th there's one that's just black with a horn. It's a black short hair with a, with a single horn. And I'm like, yes, you don't look like a nightmare out of an 80s Saturday morning cartoon for girls. <laughs> yeah, they look almost like they're Muppet props come to life yeah. in a really bad way. Yeah. Uh, which one do you mean when you say Bob? Because Bob is the name of someone and not a cat. Oh, is you mean Homer? Homer, yes. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I also came from Hi-Fi Rush, with, yeah. which oh. I believe a part of our NDA with getting a code from Square Enix is do not buy Hi-Fi Rush. Buy for Spoken. <laughs> <laughs> like, like the rest of the cats, you know, they're just cats. They're weird looking. Homer looks like a guy in a suit. <laughs> And, and I know that breed of cat has that weird fish-eyed look on their face all the time. But when he animates, he just looks like a guy in a cat suit. It looks like kaiju work. It, it's weird. It is wrong, and I couldn't put my finger on why. So I, mm, it, it has really unsettling eyes. Mm -hmm. And and they probably over modeled it because I have to assume things in the three hour seventh gen intro to this game. <laughs> got a lot more attention than uh, the everything else that is transparently unfinished. Yeah. <laughs> the three hours of a gen segment where they make a s two streets in New York City, and that is it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's like three connecting streets that go around one block. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I need to get to the cafe. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it was right here. It's that one mission in, in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas where you go to Liberty City to kill people in like a diner. Oh. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I actually didn't know they did that. That's pretty funny to just have a bespoke, separated, isolated thing. Oh, now I'm seeing the part in GTA 3 where they actually, you can find a section they use at the very beginning of the game for the intro, just fl floating out to oh, yeah. island somewhere. Yeah, it's out it in the void. <laughs> uh, I had a very specific problem during uh, the intro that I, I didn't correct because I really wanted it to carry over into this review. Um, I fell asleep during it. <laughs> But still managed to play it. <laughs> if only you could have carried that energy through the entire rest of the game. I feel like that's like, the ideal. The apartment was on fire. The, the bag of money goes up. I woke up with the cuff on when the portal opens. I literally slept played through the intro. 
I can't believe you. There's, it's, it's, there's, um, this intro has a lot of, you've seen this a million times before, and I understand your brain just shutting down. <laughs> I, I clapped when I saw she had Alice in Wonderland on her oh show. Oh my God. Jesus. That was, that, that was when my <laughs> expectations hit rock bottom immediately. It's mm -hmm. like the first thing in the game. The first two things they start with are, she's an orphan, so you instantly know the rest of the, of the entire plot. Uh, yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Then there's the Alice in Wonderland thing. The only thing that distracted me briefly was that girl who's dressed like MC Hammer. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best part of the intro. I'm like, yes, more foreign people riding New Yorkers, please. <laughs> all of that all day. The, the worst part is it's like, it's not even that foreign. It's a Californian. <laughs> yeah, it's just two Californians sitting there and being like, we ran, wrote random episodes of these TV series. Um, this is what a New Yorker is. They're, and they're both young. I would understand if they were like, they got the people who wrote chips in the 70s. <laughs> it's like, what does a New York gang look like? I guess they have like an umbrella hat and gold chains on. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, honestly, uh, the intro, because a lot of people, a lot of people on Twitter were upset. They're like, this is a very racist game, this opening. I'm like, you know, th 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 many things can set off false flags. Maybe it's not that bad. It really didn't, I didn't remotely come around to their side until I got, she owns nothing but a copy of Alice in Wonderland and three nice sneakers. And I'm just <laughs> like, hmm. And then I'm like, this is, this is, you know, if the sneakers were in the corner of the room and not even interactable, that would be one thing. But she literally looks at the sneakers and goes, I could stare at these all day. And I'm like, all right, sure. Okay. The obsession with quote unquote her kicks. Mm -hmm. Really just feels like some hack threw a dart at a board. <laughs> she was this close to being a fidget spinner collector, and we just lost that timeline. I, I saw the shoes, and I thought, wait a minute. I played the demo, and you switch capes, necklaces, and uh -huh. nail paint. Yeah, but not shoes, no. In this game, were you magic parkour? Like, Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, they don't... It, it was cut. Like everything Could that's, have been, yeah. that's a character trait for her feels so underdeveloped. Like they give her that and then liking books and that equates to she likes those shoes in her room. And, and she likes the bookshelf that lets her decide which challenge to take next and the brace will not stop being like, you really love these books, don't you? Yes, that and then she likes Alice in Wonderland, but she doesn't have knowledge of any other book on the planet. <laughs> like there's <laughs> no... Greater yeah, that's that's depth to any of it. Like, if Amy Hedig had written this game, like the whole thing, you bet your ass there would be random pulls from small books that are somewhat pop culture that would relate to situations at hand. You know, oh, this situation's like Gulliver Travels. It's, it's things, things like that. Yeah, instead it's just, oh, she uses slang. And it's just the most generic slang. Honestly, can we just talk about, like, everyone who listens to our podcast knows I curse a lot. Mm -hmm. She is bad at cursing. It curses a lot. It shouldn't <laughs> sound so strange to just say fuck. Yes. And that's what's bugging me. I just, there's some element of it where it's like a thing will happen and her only reaction is to just go, fuck. Yeah, she, she <laughs> morphs into Lewis Black. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that she was that upset. <laughs> like, if she sold it, she's just a, damn it! <laughs> like, every time she takes a minor amount of damage, she's cursing for five minutes straight in cup. She's like, okay, are we done? Uh, could you stop, please? I'm so tired of hearing you scream. Now, there was a really good moment, because you run into Bob, which is Robian. Yes. Um, and he starts talking. This guy's performance is really good. You know, I think there are some good performers in this, but the material... Uh, but Romeo starts talking, and I'm like, that's the guy from Dragon's Crown. Wait, no, they're just British. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Uh, but yeah, no, they're, they're, there are a lot of things in this. If they developed them, would have been super cool. Like Romeo, like other things. And yet it's all left completely flat. This is a game where they took... There's, there's not only that for all the characters and the story and everything else, because as it was mentioned earlier... She's an orphan, so you know how this will go if you've ever experienced a young adult novel or anything, movie, film version of a book, ever. You will know the arc from that moment on. But there's like a bunch of things in this gameplay-wise that are the same thing, where it just feels like it wasn't developed any more than this skeleton. 
This is one of the few games I've ever played open world-wise where the chemicals you get from doing fun stuff in an open world don't fire once. Yeah, it, it, it's all like, wrong. Once I did... Wh what is the name of the first area? Um, Janoon? Yeah, Janoon. Wait, no, no that's, that's the that's last, you, actually. That's where you spawn yeah, in. Right. Spawn in I was you thinking, go to Sepal and then yes. whatever the area outside of Sepal is. Yeah, I can't remember the name of the southeast area, but... Desert. <laughs> well, no, that's the, the the red area is Praenost. Praenost. Uh, you go there, and I did a lot of the side content there, and then I, I hit a certain Fuck point. Praenost. <laughs> Why is that? Like, the first area outside of Sepal is where you realize, oh, this game has five things to do. Uh-huh. And you're yeah. going to be doing them the whole time. Yeah. Praenost is where, hey, we designed this whole area like it's a fucking PS2 game on purpose, so it's hard to get around. Yes. So when you get your movement abilities, you'll appreciate them. And yet I spent the whole game Fuck off. being like, there's a next level to this movement system, right? And they're like, no, you're at your peak. And I'm like, really? Yeah. This is the peak? You spent so many lines of the game being like, you almost flew there. And all these w weird lines about flying. And I'm like, so obviously the end game is I can. Wasn't there okay. flying in one of the trailers? Uh, th it's been so long since I watched the early trailers. I honestly don't know. I think it was just the the high speed jump run, something like that, and like not actual flying. But I don't know. Yeah, I mean, like by the time you collected all this stuff, you get shimmy and soar and whatever the the fire dash one is, and, the and surfboard and, and, and the, yeah, and surfboard. You you really can just hold the button down and go from one end to the other. And it, when when you've got a good open area to do it across. It can be, like, the most fun part of the game. And then, if you want to go vertically up a very certain amount or more, mm -hmm. it just becomes hell. Yeah. They're like, it, can, well, I, can I cheese that? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Every time I try and go up a wall, it feels more like I'm trying to glitch up a wall, like in, like in Skyrim, Skyrim or yeah, something. It, doesn't, it just feels wrong. That is how it felt for me, too, which is why the comparison mentally, as I'm realizing these powers are so infamous-like. Mm-hmm is it's it's very very negative it's it's not a pleasant <laughs> like you don't want to compare with infamous second son a game that shipped 10 years ago or nine years ago when your mobility is nowhere near as fun but everything in this game you have to compare to games from 10 or nine years ago because <laughs> at most recent or actually. longer yeah <laughs> like, guys i don't know how long you worked on this engine but we solved a lot of these problems design wise a long time ago yeah it's it's very bizarre like the amount of times you'll get into a combat sequence and you'll defeat all the enemies and then it'll fade to black and then it'll fade the camera to somewhere else and then five guys will wander up like they're lost in the woods <laughs> and yeah. then it'll fade back to you and you'll fight them and i'm like this i haven't seen a game do this in forever one, one more thing about the mobility it, yeah sure it seems crazy that you get the faster running with the fire feet but they'll so often put just minor bumps in the ground to stop you from doing that Oh, yeah. Like, the, the terrain just isn't designed right for it. There's yeah, such a long delay that, between That's when that. you have to shimmy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's weird because, in a way, the uh, time mechanic for running to go faster and keep the speed up is a lot like the Tony Hawk, uh, what is it, Proving Grounds uh, kick. Mm. You know, they added in the last one. But because of that thing you're talking about, it just constantly just gets disengaged as a mechanic as I have to re-engage the run because I hopped over the world's smallest rock. Right. And like, this wasn't a problem in Final Fantasy XV. Like, they have right. this exact running thing where you can oh. increase your stamina as you, <laughs> if you time the, the, the button Are right. You fucking but it works right. And the drown doesn't screw you up like this. <laughs> so it's like, in many ways, is I think Chris was saying, it, it's worse than Final Fantasy XV. Yeah. Which is incredible. I mean, obviously, I've, I've I've seen enough of Final Fantasy XV to know. <laughs> like, this is just a lesser version of that. The moment that really killed me is when you get that, uh, like, lash ability that lets you, like, pull yourself places. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like, how did you make this feel worse than the warp strike in Final Fantasy XV? This is something you implemented in a game already and then did worse. Mm. Yeah. Game code provided by Square Enix. One part of this I really didn't expect, and I don't know, maybe you guys were. I expected the music to be better. It feels like there's not enough songs, and they're all very dreary. Like, 
in, in the marketing, at least, this game seems like Epic Boss Girl takes on old fantasy to become the, the, the girl boss. That's the title screen music that has nothing to do with the rest of the tone or setting of the game. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, like they have that. They even put that theme song into the trailers and stuff. I thought it was going to be a lot more like hip hop. Like epic. Yeah, yeah. That, that's how they sold it. Like very late 90s, like, oh yeah, modern New Yorker goes to fairy tale world and there's a culture clash. And every right. now and then they remember that that was kind of a thing they set up. And then she curses a couple <laughs> times. <laughs> <laughs> then we move on. Yeah. I, I remember that the game has a lay motif, but if you put a gun to my head, I could not recall any parts of it or the, <laughs> any of the songs at all, honestly. Every time I've tried to remember <laughs> the exact note order, it just sounds like the musical equivalent of getting depressed because it's like whoa, whoa, whoa. every time I try to remember any of the music, I just like the the, the battle music, your regular battle music, you know, uh -huh. has that that ho 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 chorus at the beginning. So when you're just skipping a bunch of shit uh -huh. and getting into random fights, having that music start and stop over and over is amazing. <laughs> it's really funny too because the whole time, you know, your brace is just like. Do you think you got this one? And she's like, we're going to find out as I'm running away. <laughs> Look, there's something there. What should we do? Uh, pretend we didn't see it as I just zip by. I'm like, good job. Yeah, you guessed correctly this time, game. And you checked my velocity and went, yeah, this bitch ain't stopping. <laughs> no, I just started skipping everything on the map once I realized that defeat enemy and scout area were the same activity. Yeah. Yeah, the only activity I, I kept doing was when it was simply find this statue and break it to get a stat point. Cause I'm like, I know it's going to be easy. I know it's going to get me something. Do it. I actually did a number of the side content past that. Like, you know, if there's puddle of water, you jump in to get a spell. Oh yeah, those, of uh, course those. Cause sometimes those are essential movement options. And while I realized the labyrinth is the cheapest fucking thing in a video game this year, already on our game of the year list for budget dimension of the year as a nominee, the, I found it weirdly fascinating and fun for a little bit, especially once, you know, I realized purple magic's probably the way to stay, so I overleveled that. Because each challenge you do for a different spell makes all of them stronger, so part of me went, I don't think there's enough game here to make these other magics catch up. <laughs> Especially since when you go to upgrade your equipment, you upgrade it based on what magic you want to do. I just used all the resources on purple, and yeah, at some point it became an absolute joke. That's funny, I actually didn't even get good armor until the end of the game and it didn't affect my ability to play it at all. Like I didn't upgrade anything. I, I'm, I'm gonna try to act shock one moment. <laughs> yeah, I realize every time I do uh, one of the early in the game, it'd get me, uh, say a necklace was a stat that I just didn't care about. Like a, oh, it's got a bonus to this situation that'll never happen. So right. I'm like, okay, I don't need these. And then I just didn't need them for the entire game. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, each each necklace you get gives you a different, like, causal effect, mm -hmm. right? Like, oh, in cases like this, this happens. They all start with them, but you can recraft right. all that. Right, but right. when you get them, they allow you to craft those two other ones. Mm -hmm. So that's 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 the that's supposed to be the joy of discovering it. But the problem is so many of them are so specific where it's like, when you crit, it might poison. And I'm like, I like these where I heal when they die and doing a finishing blow takes no stamina. It was really weird where I'm all the way in the post game. Speaking of which, who are you even engaged with the post game? Like, you, did you see credits roll and just? I, I booted back in to see what it would do. Okay, so did you do the quest after the credits because there's the tiny closure thing? Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna talk a little bit about spoilers. So if you're sensitive, if you're sitting here and listening to this and you're like, I, I need to try this for spoken, maybe, you know, maybe pause the video and think about it deeper and uh, come back later. So you beat the game, it rolls credits. The post credits quest line is to go do every boss fight in the game. Ah, no, I, I finished like the conversation you have with your tattoo and like checked in with a couple of people in Sepal and went outside and went, oh, there's nothing new out here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, I, I ran to like a couple fountains and one of the fountains gave me some shit I don't even remember. Yeah. That, that's accurate. A lot of the fountains give you something that's not life-changing and it's kind of unremarkable. You have the idea that after you discover behind a secret painting in the first room you came over to this realm in, you find a thing and that gives you the idea, I should fight via the memory dimensions, which are all over this game. There's a whole mission type that is the memory dimension. You should fight every boss of the game again using the memory dimension thing. 
And the conclusion Why? of this arc is for you to go, <laughs> I'm gonna figure out how to save the world. And it's like, we didn't learn anything. You didn't do anything. There was no epiphany through you refighting all these bosses. But she said it, Dan. Isn't that not enough? <laughs> no, that is not enough. That's the whole plot of the game. You, you didn't do anything. <laughs> you didn't achieve anything. We found nothing out. That describes the game. <laughs> yeah. You described the entire game on a macro level. Yeah. The, la the labyrinths, though. There must have been a time where they were randomly generated, right? I mean, they, virtually, been... they virtually seem that way because the construction of them is never distinct enough. It, to not is nondescript stone block hallways and and yeah. big rooms mm -hmm. it felt indistinguishable except worse of course from the chalice dungeons in bloodborne that everyone hated because they were low effort and randomly generated okay bob tell them what you walked in with the baggage of so it's a lot like when you go to the map creator in folklore on the playstation 3 <laughs> It's all 90 degree turns and what is this enemy room full of enemy yeah. wise? Yeah, that's it. Like it's, it's literally the same thing, but looks a little nicer. <laughs> like the Labyrinth content isn't good content, but none of it was mm -hmm. because you'll, it'll be like, hey, go explore this castle. You know, like Agro was saying a bit ago. And by explore this castle, we, they mean proc the waves of enemies you have mm -hmm. to fight off. So this treasure chest opens. Which man, like <laughs> the enemies are bad. Mm hmm. They're not fun to fight. Mm -hmm. I think this combat system might work with a couple of tweaks. Good enemies and that that counter and dodge thing worked when you hit the buttons. <laughs> that, that'd be neat, right? I, I just, anytime I wanted to dodge anything, I never let go of the run key and just kept running the whole time. That's there, the there, only way I could get it to do. There is a setting um, and this game has some good settings. Yeah. Where you can go in and like tweak the difficulty uh, by doing stuff like, you automatically evade stuff or enemies stay down for longer or you just take less damage and you leave everything else alone. Mm -hmm. It's there, There's a lot of really cool settings in there that I saw when I turned it to easy because <laughs> you, you remember when uh, Sinta attacks Sapal and then everybody like she, God, she's so fucking crazy. Like she, you're like, oh, the Tantas are, are mad, but they used to protect us. So we still kind of like them. And you're like, that's a reasonable position. And then Sinta shows up. She's like, I'm going to murder this ginger if you don't give me what I want. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you people? Yeah, no. This is this is your empress queen? Well, I'm doing <laughs> this for 20 years? It's okay. It was a fun slip and slide down to this being how she deals with every problem. God, we'll get to the Tantas. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but like, so you you fight her, except you're fighting her weird angel armor puppet thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that was neat. And then I, I go toward her castle and I get to the rampart and one of those walks out. I'm like, okay, I guess I'm fighting him again. And then the camera zooms up and another one's like flying down like it's Devil May Cry 1. Like, <laughs> ha ha, idiot, you're fighting two now. And I'm like, pause settings <laughs> easy <laughs> okay who changed who changed to easy and when i never changed because i did i i totally get it i totally do but i didn't change it once the game just absolutely got creamed yeah i also did not change because i was just like i need to know i need to know what they think is difficulty <laughs> Well, the, the funny thing is the difficulty settings at the beginning are some of the weirdest I've ever seen it phrased, where it's just like, for people who want the story, for people who love combat, for people who want to explore the open world, and I'm like, which of these what? is what? <laughs> right? Excuse yeah, me? Yeah, and then you get the game booted and it lets you actually select normally easy and hard. And it's like, right. what, what, why wasn't this at the front? <laughs> which one was which on that screen back? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like the open world. Give me hard mode. Is, is this that meme? <laughs> Do two of these options lead to the same doorway? <laughs> is this, are all of these easy except for the one that says combat try hard mode? I totally get changing it to easy, though. There's nothing enjoyable about this combat. No. Like, like just, just the spell suite fucking rules yeah on like, paper you get the purple magic which is all your shooty magic with the different shooty stuff and th the way you use the support spells and they build up to your big thing and then mm -hmm. using your regular spells recharges the support spells and then once you get more magics how you can switch between them which is like the last thing they give you where you get the moves where you hold l1 and r1 and mm -hmm. one of the face buttons uh -huh. and you fucking style switch into a different magic system and yeah. blue just sucks ass the whole time and I hated every fight they made me use it in because red and green rule so hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ugh, like popping crucible and arc slashing and rage fisting was cool. 
on all of those shitty enemies. Yeah. Some of which you couldn't even fucking see because look at all the grass we put in our game. Putting more shit on the ground and more particle effects is like having a game. The cell processor is amazing. <laughs> Excuse me, the what? <laughs> There was there was so many parts like the dragon fight in the very beginning where it's like, how am I supposed to dodge when there's so much fucking particle effects on the screen? I can't see the enemy. You know, we talked about the, the difficulty setting. We didn't talk about what performance mode we were in. Uh, <laughs> Agra, what did you play on? Uh, I set it to performance and I turned it off to say, I wonder what that looks like. Oh, God. Bob? The performance, yeah. Chris? Performance. I, Dan Video Games, played in ray tracing exclusively. <laughs> How many frames were in that game? Can you show us with your fingers? <laughs> <laughs> it had this many. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it got bad, but I noticed, like, I looked over at Bob playing performance mode and it was still running at 30 at a lot of places. So I'm like, what? Yeah, the thing drops like 15 sometimes. Yeah. It's real bad. Yeah, I literally asked you because I assumed you had changed it. No. I thought you were doing performance. He's like, I am. And I'm like, what? <laughs> That's, it's those moments where I'm looking at the game going, guys, you can just buy an engine. All right. Like we have, <laughs> we have software and hardware that solves these issues. Yeah. It's really weird because the interesting thing about Luminous Productions is that they're an entire studio created and owned by Square Enix to make games with the Luminous engine. So mm -hmm. I don't know if they stop using the Luminous engine, if they get to maintain their autonomy as a separate entity they or shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> there's validity to your statement absolutely this, this... every biome in this game mm -hmm. and and so many of the enemy animations and some of Frey's animations are just from final fantasy 15 this is like the sunken cost fallacy the game yeah it is yeah, like a lot of her sword swings are from Noctis. Yeah, which that's really obvious, by the way. Yeah. Uh, you could have watched just the E3 2013 trailer for Final Fantasy 15 and seen the sword swings are the same <laughs> as Noctis. <laughs> but one of the weirdest things about this is, like, the whole reason the Luminous Engine exists is Unreal Engine was not ready for prime time that early. And we still had the hangover from the seventh gen tech problem where J Japanese companies didn't have this great engine, like Frostbite was for for dice and no one else <laughs> uh, in order to make their own games. So Luminous is like this evolution of the crystal tools to make their super game. This is their engine. It's like, guys, this was a mistake in 15. It is definitely a huge, absolute error to do this even one more time. The fact we're still there, we're still feeling the effects of 7th Gen in this game mm -hmm. is driving me insane. You, you mentioned crystal tools which was fantastic because I kept thinking like, this is this is Luminous Engine. This is on the Luminous Engine. Why is so much of the bones of this story and setting from the uh, fucking prophecy tech demo from the crystal? <laughs> well, see, that's the interesting thing. It does seem like the tech demo, uh, what was it? Agni's, Agni's, Agni's philosophy. Agni's philosophy, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it, it seems like this was the idea and somebody at the company thought that was really cool and, and after many horrible decisions. Yeah, like you you take that that demo and rip every single interesting thing out of it. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't have modern day stuff in the fantasy world. There's no Coke bottle. <laughs> no AK-47s. Right. Wait, what's the point? Right, you don't have this, this, this drastic contrast in the way people are living right next to each other. And you don't have cool dragons. You have that one dragon that's kind of lame. And, and really normal. And while there's some cool magic in this, some, I don't think any of it matches up to how cool the magic looked in that demo, but our wish for Spoken was as good as the Final Fantasy Tech demo from forever ago. I think Final Fantasy 16 will absolutely be the litmus test for should there be any engine other than Unreal Engine over at Square. I have a lot of confidence. <laughs> Obviously, the going to be no. <laughs> oh, no! No, I was being optimistic. <laughs> it's gonna. I will be. I will be kind of surprised if Luminous Productions survives until 16 comes out. Oh like yeah. If Square Enix isn't just like, okay, this bombed. This was your shot. You're you're folded back in. Oh yeah, 100. percent This this game is so bizarre, and it's for no one. <laughs>
<laughs> I don't. Normally, I could think of someone to recommend it, a game to. Like it was pitched for me. It wasn't yes. made for me. Right. Yes, absolutely. Like, like on paper, like like Edgar's been saying. Yeah, I want to have a ton of different spells and play a third person shooter where I use magic mm -hmm. in an open world. Like that sounds like a game that's fun. Mm -hmm. Instead, we got Bullet Witch Two. <laughs> I wish he was wrong. It's literally, <laughs> we made open world bullet witch cross the parking lot to fight these enemies in terrible ways. It's incredible because because in the credits of that game, there's not a single non-Japanese name in any of the game development side of it. Mm -hmm. Yet they somehow landed on every terrible seventh gen game mechanic from 2011. Mm -hmm. Every single yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah, it's really, it's really incredible. It is truly incredible, and I did. I expected many things would be on the other side of the door that read Forspoken. <laughs> this was none of them. <laughs> yeah. Boo. You know, you catch the trailers, and the trailers have this sort of quippy dialogue, kind of Marvel-esque, Whedon-esque, many people would describe it as, and I expected that. I didn't expect, we have the most bitter couple from the oldest, most sexist sitcom stuck together for this <laughs> entire game, hating the absolute <laughs> shit out of each other absolutely nuts as a writing decision to be like the audience will be want to want to be around this bickering couple for 20 hours i'm like no no that was the best part of the game for me <laughs> the weed and writing is one thing the yeah. quippy nature they did not record enough, enough lines. lines of dialogue to do that yeah. not even close like i'm hearing the same things over and over again after only like three hours. Right, yeah. In, no, in the world. You like, hit like the sixth time, it was like, uh, finally, time to take a load off. Could probably chill here for a while. Wonderful. I, for one, can't wait to take a load off. Take a load off what? <laughs> and, and sometimes it's in the wrong place. Like, I ran for a while and ran out of stamina. Frey, stay with me. Oh, I really thought I was going to die there. <laughs> yeah! She's, she's, she's having a small heart attack. This is another thing. This is another thing that was solved in Final Fantasy XV where they consciously went, people complained about this. We're gonna patch in like five times as many of these ambient conversations. Yeah, the, the repeated dialogue is not a problem in fifteen. Yeah. Now. <laughs> <laughs> I like the clarification at the end. I found a really good way to describe this game as Final Fantasy XV with literally nothing you liked in it. Just remove it. Think of a thing you liked in 15 and just remove it. Mm -hmm. It's so bizarre to see a game from the same studio go from one thing to a very similarly shaped thing and make that evolution. It just seems so bizarre. I don't know how we ended up here. And it's even funnier that this happened in the week that Hi-Fi Rush <laughs> shadow dropped. <laughs> Normally, Sony is the one that's making uh, completed, polished games that look premium. And instead, we got the reverse of, like, S Microsoft just dropped the whole last game. Right. And it's, and it's good. <laughs> and, and Sony, made like, let this cryptid out of their basement <laughs> for $70. Yeah, $70 video game. Good Lord. For this. Yeah. Like, that's somewhat, I like, could kind of cross that gap when it's a Sony first party game. Yeah. This ain't that. Mm -mm. This came out on Steam as well. It's not PS5 exclusive. It's also on PC. It didn't place in the top sales at all. Mm -hmm. I think it's in the, it's not even in the top 20. That's something absolutely massive. And I'm like, damn, I knew it was not going to do well. I did not expect it was not going to do even that well. Which means it's getting bodied by retro purchases of older Dead Space titles. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> it's for no one. <laughs> Do you like open world games? This is the worst one ever made. Do you like RPGs? This has no RPG mechanic. Yeah. Do you want a story? We have a story that is so stock and has so little twists that you finish it and feel like nothing happened even though things did. <laughs> there are there are two big twists mm -hmm. in, in, in the game. And both times, both moments in which I figured them out, I just, I sat there and went, oh, this is how that was. I don't think I'm supposed to know that. <laughs> okay, Agro, did you figure out that Cuff was the villain first before they revealed that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I What gave it away? Because I, I was caught off guard, but I also was starting to, to, like, check out of the plot by the time that happened. 
the very first labyrinth and the only one I did. Uh-huh. Uh, you get to the end and there's like this historical text of like, oh yeah, the whatever people sent a horrible demon mm -hmm. to this world. I'm like, wow, nobody else has mentioned that. I wonder where it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I started to suspect it at that point, and then by the time I got to the first Tonta fight, that's what I was absolutely positive, because I'm like, no, this... She keeps screaming that I'm a demon, that we're absolutely ending up in this situation. She wasn't talking to you! This is the twist! And I'm like, <laughs> That was really obvious, guys, please. <laughs> and then and then Frey looks at the camera and says that after the reveal and like flashes back to all the time to calling her demon. Yeah. I I actually when they did the reveal, I was like, but there's a second layer to this, right? Like there's some you're gonna you're gonna keep going. Please. <laughs> <laughs> right? I also because you they reveal it when you get to the Tonta can that can do mind altering powers. Yeah. It was like, me, it's a cool double twist. 10 minutes past, I'm like, maybe it's maybe it's a really good double twist. Yeah, I was, <laughs> and I was just like, no. Yeah, I was I also sleep. I was also <laughs> hoping for the cool double twist. The funny thing is the way Chris describes the cutscene, I just saw like the Black Ops Mason figures out the numbers cutscene, so it's just almost a PNG of Frey staring at the camera as numbers fly across. Yeah, no, I, I was with Bob on this one. I'm like, okay, yeah, so he's the bad guy, but this situation is more complicated, right? Right. Right. You would hope. Because otherwise, oh my god. Like, you start to wonder at some point if the story concept just goes, have you read a young adult novel? Write one. This fucking demon. Susser, Susserus? Is that how you fucking Susserus. say his actual name? Sussy Baca? I, I, I think it's supposed to be like the root word of susurration, which means to whisper. So it's, I'm Ooh. like, oh, that's a cool name. Oh. Huh. One cool they thing. Go, they simultaneously oh. go, oh, this is an evil demon that the first generation of Tantas had to seal. Mm -hmm. But then they act like, no, the, 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 the foreign people that the Tantas purged made him to get revenge, and he's really committed to that duty. It, it, they're contradictory in what little there is. Yeah, that's like, is he some demon from beyond the veil? Or is he this thing that they created? And then they have Frey try to reason with him a couple times, and then that just stops. Yeah, I thought it was really weird because, of course, it sounds like the the people who are attacking them were actually from an extra dimension. Yeah, like they had traveled yeah, from, their from another world. Right, but I thought it was really weird that they didn't try to have Frey turn, you know, Van Brace, convince him to come over to the good side or anything like that, because that makes the post game the worst thing in the world as you're now just quipping and everything with somebody who tried to murder an entire city of yeah, people. It, 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 it's an old, you know, wizard trope thing where you've got a demon in a bottle and like, ah, uh -huh, if I can get out of here, I'm going to eat your fucking liver. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's extra funny. They didn't record new voice lines for after she, he's right. back with Oh, her. yeah, no, we yeah. couldn't have done that. Yeah, and so, they, they so also, some of them are too amicable. And also they didn't record new voice lines for when she doesn't have the cough. So she's like, oh, man, we really got that. It's like, we? Yeah. She's saying this stuff when there's no brace and they just don't play braces. Yeah, come but back. She, she's got the other Tonta's powers within her. <laughs> this so is before it's, that. It's, she's full of the love of God. <laughs> to, to, to Chris's point from earlier where it's like, or I, I, you or Chris had just said, like, she, you'd never read a young adult novel before. Mm -hmm. And then Bob had said earlier, yeah, she's only read Alice in Wonderland because if she had ever read any <laughs> other book... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I know. It really is. Just. <laughs> Could you imagine leaning into that as a writing decision? She just gets there. She's like, I know where this is going. Coming into this after years of watching Isekai anime, where everyone has to be insanely like tuned in to what's in those, like uh -huh. everyone inside of them knows. Mm -hmm. Like they're all in on it. So coming back to something that feels like it was written 30 years ago is bizarre. Yeah, this genuinely is written like a young adult novel converted in the 90s, not even the aughts. They got a little bit more aware of the format and the tropes and everything in the right? aughts, I feel. Yeah. Like that, that really leans into the, the second plot twist uh, you weren't supposed to know, which you're walking up uh, Sinta's hallway and looking at paintings and like, these yeah. are oh, all the oh, time. Right, we yeah. weren't supposed to know that, right? You yeah, see you the taunt of love and I'm like, Frey. Why do you have no genre savvy? 
She's the Tantra of love. And it, I love it because the moment you look at her painting, every other painting, you're just like, oh, they're so cruel. They look so powerful. That's kind of scary. You get to her and you're just like, she's beautiful on the inside and out. And I'm just like, that's her mom. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm supposed to. No, like, I, 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 it immediately made me think of um, the Telltale Games Walking Dead games. Uh-huh. Oh. Yeah, in episode two, I had a moment like that because it was so stuck <laughs> that I didn't pick up on it. My brain automatically made the connection. Right. Where, like, early on in the game, like, you're in a hotel and everybody's starving and two guys walk up. They're like, we've got plenty of food back at the farm. Why don't y'all come and eat a spell? And I'm like, those men are cannibals. <laughs> That's weird where that come from. <laughs> I really I really relate to the Tantas hmm? <laughs> because they get told something horrible is happening and then don't change what they're doing at all. They take no action whatsoever to mitigate the possible effects of the bad thing. They just keep going. They get they they, they think they know. They know the demon's going to drive us insane. Uh, we're not going to abdicate power or set up any kind of contingency for that. Yeah. No. We're just going to raw dog this until we wake up and decide to start crucifying people. <laughs> right, exactly. They're just like, they're just like, don't worry about this, guys. We're going to go fucking insane, and then we're going to be, 20 years from now, we're going to be four crazy-ass bitches. <laughs> Which, like, th th them in their madness um, was overall disappointing. Because, like, you roll up on Cinta, and you know what? Maybe that's just what she's like. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Yeah. The the judge one ruled. Mm -hmm. That whole sequence was cool as shit. Yeah, that was the best one. The, that was the only one that really felt infested in, hey, she's insane. Yeah. Yeah. Right? The mind-altering one was dead. And your mom is like, I'm also crazy, but not because I'm a dragon now. It's like, if you could have just turned into a dragon, why didn't all of you do that? <laughs> that would have fucking ruled. See, that was the thing. I thought the second plot twist you were going to bring up is the fact her mom is the dragon. And when the oh. dragon didn't murk your ass the second time you ran into it and was carrying you through the air, I'm like, that's my mom. <laughs> <laughs> they never go into, okay, why is she a dragon? Well, she got taught Because the cuff is what makes you insane. Well, yeah, she, but she, she overcame. she somehow took her cuff off and threw it <laughs> she into over... another dimension. And also the cuff doesn't affect Frey. Well, she became. Would it have affected Frey? We don't know because they didn't ride it. I think that it didn't affect her mom before she had Frey because her real power was having Frey as a baby in her, and that's why she wasn't going insane. That's what gave her strength. And I wish they invested and actually went into that, but they didn't. Instead, it's just like, well, Frey's also resistant to it. That sure is most things in this game. Yeah. But that has, we, before we leave this, we need to talk about the funniest <laughs> scene in this whole video game. Mm. Okay. Go oh, God. Where Frey's mom is... <laughs> Tosses her in a portal. <laughs> Just like, oh, the baby goes in here. It's great because you get the build up before this of what happened on that faithful day. And it's like, I took you to the other world to keep you safe. And then they show it and it just goes. Yeah, it's, it's like any reasonable person would be like, well, you go to the other world and try and find the dad or, right, or right. leave him on the ground at least, not oh just- Oh my God, her father. Okay, <laughs> we have to talk about the possibility with her father. The, the scarily real, enough scarily real that I think it might be the intended read that he died in 9-11. No. It times out, but I didn't because, find a single scrap of text in the game to confirm. Oh, Just yes, timelines. because she's born in December 2001, and while we, we get the, the flashback dimension of her mom talking to her before she's born, she's like, oh, your dad's a hero, and that's all we get. Yeah, the, the, I was like, no. I, the, the, the problem is I, I can't review, the, I can't refute this theory at all. No. Like they didn't give me enough to work with. They just keep saying he's a hero. He's a hero. He's a New York City hero. And the weirdest part is, I feel like them not divulging that is setting up for sequel stuff, much like the end of the game did. Uh huh. And I'm like, this is the most insanely audacious thing oh, in this game. How do you make a sequel to this game? Like, like. She trips and oops, all the taunts of powers fly out of her. Yeah, and then a new evil arrives. That's, that's, From where? Uh, well, she she travels to yet another realm and finds a magical chest plate, okay? Like she's got breastplate on and it possesses her. <laughs> And she's like, well, this went well last time. I'll just feel it out for now. <laughs> Maybe for 20 years. And then if I go crazy, that's on them. Yeah, that's on them. Next <laughs> game's set in New York. You, you have to wonder if that was the plan. 
I think, um, and I know we're well past this conversation, but real quick, I wanted to touch on this and get this out there. I feel like the main reason the combat doesn't feel good at all is because they tie moving quickly to doing cool, sick dodges. So trying to evade an attack normally and just move around someone often involves you getting near an enemy and Frey deciding to do a cool flippy do. And so you can't move quickly through an environment and do melee attacks at all. So I just stayed at range and threw rocks at the end. Yeah, you can't even like yeah. do parkour and shoot at the same time, which seems crazy. Like it's a game about <laughs> using your magic parkour. Why wouldn't you be shooting at the same time? You can, but you do one shitty. You do one yeah, shitty do one flip. flip. Exactly. Yeah. They, they've got this parkour movement system and they've got this third person magic shooting system and they have nothing to do with each other. Mm -hmm. And yeah. like they just tried to friction weld them together. <laughs> And so it's in this game, $70. Every single uh -huh. NPC in this game yeah. sucks. Yes. Yes. That's really unfortunate, too. I, I wanted to claw my fucking eyes out getting a tour around the city <laughs> from that carpenter kid who's for some reason wearing like a farrier's vest. Don't ask me. I, I'm like, I don't. Feed four sheep, aggro. Do it. Even though we just had the conversation about how we don't have to feed the sheep. I know. Because they uh, tend the grounds. Uh, that 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 drove me absolutely insane when they're just like, see, we have the sheep feed on the grass from the area in the cemetery. It's very convenient. Now feed these sheep. <laughs> you can't be in the upper city, demon. You're poor. Get me the fuck out of here. Yeah, it was a terrible tour, and that did a lot to damage my interest in doing any of the side objectives. Which, note, they're not called side objectives. They're called detours. <laughs> and since they were very hell-bent on that and calling the plague the break, which Frey starts calling the second she shows up, and then everyone in this entire realm decides, her name's so good, let's stick with the break. Because things and are broken. And they have no name of their own. This shit has lasted for 20 years. No. And nobody came up with a name for this phenomenon. They, they call it the corruption. Yeah. They, 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 they literally, literally had call, a name. And it made it actually worked a lot more to describe what it does. But instead, Frey shows up and says, The Break. Since they're going to call side objectives detour, and they're going to call the corruption The Break, they should have called the main objectives Bangers. They should have just leaned all the way in and just been like, check this out. <laughs> I'm just saying, if they're going to invent shitty words for everything, they should just go the whole way and keep going. There's um, there's a chart I saw once, and I don't remember if it was an XKCD comic or oh not. Oh my god, this is <laughs> not a good thing. <laughs> but it was, it was like the, the quality of your fantasy fiction is inversely correlated to how many words you have made up for things we have completely functional names for. Yeah. What what did you travel from New York to Athia through? A portal. Yeah, a fucking portal. Quickly, everyone, into the Torana. Fuck off. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> well, see, that was the one time she uh, conceded to use their word for a thing instead of her enlightened uh, socialite New Yorker style coming in and renaming everything. She was like, I'll give them this one, Torana. It just rolls off the tongue. <laughs> now I'm imagining Frasier going to another world. <laughs> that would be so much better. That Obvious. is a way better game. <laughs> every every line delivered, Kelsey Grammer would have just killed. Yes, absolutely. So yeah, that's uh, a thing I do now. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's really good because I feel like you would set up the brace to be even more of a shitbag when it's voiced by Niles. <laughs> We're just printing money here. Yeah. <laughs> you can do the Square Enix. We can't stop you. Let's do the sequel. It's a reboot. Yeah. Forspoken reboot. <laughs> do it. Seven years from now. Can't we just call it Final Fantasy something? <laughs> See, that was the weird thing. No. Part of me wondered if, like, at any, because early on when we got leaks of this, people were like, yeah, they have two Final Fantasies in development at the same time. And I'm like, well, that's not unprecedented. They've done that before. So that's interesting. Then it gets shown and it says Forspoken. And then somebody was like, oh, the, the other one's actually a Final Fantasy, though. <laughs> and part of me is like, was, was there a good few months where they're like, this is going to be... No, it's not. <laughs> and they just I, went the other direction. Maybe, maybe so early in development that they hadn't even decided to hire Hollywood writers yet. Because hmm. Square Enix has always... Like, you hear about it a lot. Crystal Dynamics and IDOS talked about, like, we kept trying to 
get them to let us make a Final Fantasy, even to the point where we worked on one without telling them. And every single time we brought it to them, they said, fuck, no, get out. <laughs> <laughs> what a weird game. This is, you know, I just finished uh, dive bombing a lot of video games for Game of the Year. You know, Xenoblade Chronicles 3. A lot of games with a lot of good characterization. God of War Ragnarok. Really superb writing in that. Not just through what the arc is and the themes, but also through the characterization and how fully fleshed out all these people are. This felt like going into shock. <laughs> <laughs> it genuinely felt like my senses were so bombarded with it being so alien after spending so long in those that I just thought, this is a weird part and we will get past this. <laughs> <laughs> I had that same experience with side content. Because in those two games, the side content is my favorite part of them. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Coming to the side content here, and it's literally like the worst, mm -hmm. was intense. Yeah, it is really intense. Like, possibly bad. I made the point of uh, Far Cry 6, which is possibly the least respected Far Cry. Mm -hmm. Possibly. Because tech nerds love 2, because right. it still has a lot of cool systems and ones made by Crytek. Anyways, Far Cry 6's side content has more. In engaging hooks in it to bring it back to serve the gameplay and other things than this. And that is a really weird and low bar, I feel. Mm -hmm. Because, for example, in Far Cry 6, you can get airfields. So now you're able to bring different types of vehicles, planes, into missions that really don't expect them. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, this, there's nothing. The watchtowers uh, can work as fast travel, but so can walking in a door. Okay, those cottages are everywhere. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to do anything to unlock fast travel in this game. You just walk into a house. And since there's not much more going on in this game, it feels like there's nothing else they could build a single hook into. The, the forts mm -hmm. that are all flashbacks, just tell me that this game was a completely different game at some point. Because they wanted to have a living world outside of Sepal. Right. And they cut that entirely. It just mm -hmm. feels like a completely dead world out there. So they literally have her go back in time to defend people who will certainly die anyway from a monster invasion. Which is weird. Yeah, it's really strange. It feels like it was from some part of different version of the game where you'd be saving these people. There, there was, and that's really the, this game's, I think, core problem from its inception. These people didn't have a game concept they had a stack of really cool concept art. You can't. I don't care what that YouTube series told you. <laughs> you can't start there and make a good game. <laughs> the thing that those missions reminded me of the most mm -hmm. was user-generated content in the infamouses, where it's just like, oh, go no. here and fight these waves. Oh, no. no mm -hmm. mm, yeah. When, when your content that is one of your main, because as you said, uh, Agro, it's like five different mission types. When one of your five mission types just reminds me of shitpost tier online made content by users made through brute force, really rough tools, it shouldn't resemble that because that, that implies that you have a tool issue. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, they, just like everything else in the game, feels like we were going to do a thing, uh, but then we couldn't. Like, like even when you're collecting the cats, like I think there was supposed to be a mini game or something here. You're right. Other than this. Yeah. Because like sometimes like, oh, the cat appeared over there. And now like, why do I have to walk 15 feet to the cat platform? Like what, yeah. what was the point of this? Something else was here. <laughs> the most compelling type of open world gameplay, walk. <laughs> there, there, there was so much of that in the side, in the detours. Sorry, sorry, got to stay on brand. The detours. The detours, because all they do is waste your fucking time. <laughs> yes. Although I, uh -huh. I made a mistake earlier. What? And I have to apologize. <laughs> there is one NPC that doesn't suck. Mm. Shohidi. Oh. She is the backbone of this fucking game. I kept looking forward to when I would encounter Johidi in the story again. Just to be clear, that is the archivist? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah okay. that is the best character. Mm -hmm. I yeah. I was trying to remember any names. <laughs> it's okay, just mix it up with Hi-Fi Rush like I did. <laughs> People are probably like, that cat's not, the name isn't Bob in Hi-Fi Rush, Dan. It's 808. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I really, really tried. Yeah. I, I was, I sat down and I booted the game. I'm like, okay, all right, Agro. You're going to be the only one in that recording that's going to like this game. Are you ready to dig down deep and really like this game? 
I honestly, when when my expectations of the game changed from a 60 hour game to something smaller, I was like, okay, that, that's cool. I could totally see it being a cool one of those. I didn't play the demo. I basically walked in blind from the trailer. I had no idea. How could we have expected this? This game isn't done. The audacity to release it at $70 on top of it just not how, being how done. How could we expect the game not being done? Big, big luminous productions logo at the start of this game. <laughs> Look, you want to think that they're not just going to do the same game again, but worse. They spent longer working on this than they did on 15, I think. It has been. I, well, they spent so I long doing believe... post support for 15. Yeah. So it's hard to divest. Yeah. Like, we can't count from launch. Right. But that is what I did before. And I was like, it's been like seven years. What the fuck are they doing? <laughs> I, I don't believe any any anybody claiming that this started development before Tabata left. I, I just don't believe. Yeah, I don't know. You have I'm, to pin down a timeline, I think. Because, like, like, you play through the game, and so much of it, like, at a certain point, I stopped being mad about how bereft and flat everything was and started just being impressed that they got it to run so stably. Right. Because it, it felt like there was, there was a much bigger game that just they couldn't work with their fucking engine. But they, they clamped it down and they got it to work. And they had to rip a bunch of shit off of it to get it to run. But by God, they went in there with the scalpel and cut all that shit out. And now it's a functioning video game with a bunch of weird segments that feel like they're the start of something and then don't go anywhere. Like when you enter the deep corruption and like you float down through the water and there's like a cool water effect for like a 30 foot radius. Yeah, that and upset me so much. Forget about that. Because it was so cool. And then it's just... Well, I guess it didn't mean anything. Art book. N not, not a game, Doc. I thought you were saying you wanted an art book so that way you could see what was cut from the game, like the Halo Infinite art book. Ooh, that thing was a graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought of Halo Infinite a lot during the 90-minute uh, walk down a hallway and see holograms of what happened segment. Yeah, that was insane. Yeah, I couldn't believe that's how the game ended. It was like they... They yeah. do that same thing in Solstice, a $30 game, but it looks better. <laughs> uh, yeah. I... Also, all those all those flashbacks, I feel like we learned nothing in them. Mm -hmm. No, it was the same info over and over again. You, you got more scenes of them going crazy and talking about how they were going to go crazy. You didn't get any new insights. <laughs> Yeah, and it kind of felt like instead of seeing like cool spectral ghosts convey this information, you basically see front lawn ornaments for Christmas light up right. in sequence with the dialogue. Mm -hmm. This was the time I had to turn on like the thing in the subtitles to let me see who was talking because I was like, I don't remember <laughs> these voices and I can't recognize them through the, these portrayals. Oh, the shapes do actually match the models, but the oh, game yeah. looks so bad overall, especially yeah. in performance mode where it's like it literally dips to 720p is what I'm hearing. Mm. I'm not surprised that you're just looking at it going, I don't fucking know. I, I guess they're all people. I had to turn on subtitles way earlier during the, the whichever the Judge Tanta is scene. Yeah. Because I showed up during, I don't even know if this was supposed to happen or, because there, there was a break storm happening. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, so it's supposed to be there. And I can't hear her fucking talk over the break storm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's just made like that. Yeah, that's just yeah, how the wrong. game is. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, that, that ending sequence where you're like getting getting all the Tanta's powers back one at a time, get a power set, do a boss fight, get a power set, do a boss fight, teleport. There's a fight in there where you're you're in Pranost and you're fighting a big flying dragon and it's only vulnerable to blue magic. Mm -hmm. And blue magic has shit range and goes real slow and travels in an arc and the dragon won't fucking come close to you. No, because it's just doing its own loop. So you need to time that really well. Yeah, that was that was a really annoying fight. Oh yeah. Like it wasn't it... challenging because it basically doesn't attack you most of the time. Mm -hmm. So you're just sitting there waiting. Nope. Okay, trying it again. Got to wait for it to come around. It literally, yeah, I had the same exact experience. Thanks, thanks for letting me lock onto it. I'm so glad my magic is <laughs> slow enough that it won't hit the fucking thing. <laughs> right, exactly. What's the point of a fucking lock on where an enemy that's not going terribly fast, it's just a decent distance, it will just miss entirely. Uh, on the note of not sure a thing was supposed to work a certain way. So as I said, I did the post game. I did the post game quest. They're like, 
go explore Janoon Castle, maybe, is the implication, right? I had gotten the cottage in the village town next to the castle in Janoon. So I quick travel there. I go to the castle. Nothing happens. I spend forever just looking around it, pulsing nonstop, and just checking everything out. And I find the familiar statue. Did you get a familiar aggro? So there, there are familiars in this game. The implication is every Tanta has one. And these are like cats, yeah, the cats. seemingly. Yeah, I got, yeah. I, I got a bunch of cats. So they just show up in your cottage. Mm -hmm. So I found that at Castle Janoon and then went, there's fucking nothing else here and explored all the rest of Janoon. And Bob goes, what, what are you doing? You're supposed to go to the castle. And I'm like, nothing was there. He goes, what do you mean nothing was there? And I'm like, nothing is there. So what I do is I go, oh my God, this game. I think I know what happened. I quick travel back to Sepal and I exit the Janoon side of Sepal and it activates the castle as the objective cursor. Mm -hmm. It deleted the objective cursor entirely from the game until I quick traveled back to Sepal. Yep. Yep. It's really well made. What really a really well made. Busted video game. <laughs> Absolutely impressively broken. This thing brought up so many seventh gen vibes. I've never yeah. experienced since seventh gen. It crashed in the, during the ending for me. <laughs> I forgot. I, it just it, there's a point where it's like three weeks <laughs> later, and then it just it never came back from black. <laughs> three weeks later, she died. Um, <laughs> quit the game. <laughs> the cutscene cut that takes you into phase two of Tanta Senta. Yeah. Uh -huh. Hard crash to the screen, uh, home screen. <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. When you came back in, did it start you from that exact moment? Right from that cutscene. I was you like, know what oh, that, thank God. You know what that tells me? Huh. They know. This, oh, game, this game is just on fire, and they know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was like, if I boot this game up and I'm standing in a fucking pilgrim's refuge, I'm going to scream. <laughs> I'm going to scream, and I'm going to text very mean words to Dan. <laughs> so you come into this game, I don't know, maybe this isn't you, but I feel like a lot of people who have tried this game came into this game expecting the quipping to possibly be the worst part. It's like, it doesn't even rank. Yeah, no. <laughs> I am, like, immune to that shit. Yeah. I, I, I like it. Mm -hmm. it, like that's cool so I was ready to be like you guys are mad at the wrong part of this game yes but there was <laughs> so much there right? that I didn't even have to spend a moment going it's not that bad guys this is, this, it's really great because I'm already in the house that's on fire Agra has yet to step in and he's just like you guys are gonna be wrong and mad about the wrong part of this game and I'm like this fucking house is on fire and this motherfucker's gonna walk in and be like I like it this hot and just start disrobing <laughs> but instead he comes inside and goes oh my god it's on fire! <laughs> I definitely think they cut how much they talk just in gameplay between the demo and the final game. Because the demo only had normal and minimal on that setting. It had and high. The, and, but the, it had high? Yes. Okay. I thought they only I thought they only added that final, but it still feels like less because I played it on normal on both the demo and really? the main game. And it happened a lot more in the demo. I mean, it was it pretty was like constant. It was pretty constant in the main game to me. Like literally, I couldn't do anything in that game without hearing a line for the 40th time. This is literally the flattery versus, you know, harassment thing with Xenoblade and this. Where it's just <laughs> like, ah, Senna said the thing. That's great. Meanwhile, I'm like, shut up out both of you. Both of you shut up. <laughs> Maybe I'm just misremembering because uh, after I, I went through New York, mm -hmm. I was like, I'm not engaging with any more of this content. I'm going for the, to the objective marker and that in as fast <laughs> as possible. Yeah, I mean, after you beat the first taunt, it really feels like it doesn't want you to engage in anything else. It wants you to get, just get to the end of the game as fast as possible. See, that's funny. After I beat the first taunt, a, a part of me went insane where I'm like, I really don't like this story. I don't like these cutscenes. I'm just going to explore. So you know where I explored? Janoon. And part of me thought I was being clever because I unlocked the cottage in the Janoon village early. Mm -hmm. That early in the game. And I went... Later, I'm going to quick travel to this, and it's going to be so good. I'm going to cut out so much time. They teleport you there. In that battle, they teleport you there. And I'm like, okay. I thought I got one thing from doing side content in this game, and you just took it from me for no reason. You don't even know you did it. <laughs> you remember the lanterns? Where, where sometimes you're fighting enemies and now there are lanterns and you've got to fight. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, yes. you either have to beat up the lantern to make the enemies go away or kill the enemies to get to the lantern. Uh-huh. That moment where they really ran out of fucking ideas. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Christ. Yeah, it's really good that we had so little enemy variety in this and yet we got to enemy type that makes other enemies invincible 
pretty fast. Just, at that point, I said, am I going to fight the fucking magma spider soon? <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that would be really good if everyone just started ripping the magma spider from Devil May Cry 1 whenever they ran out of ideas in a video game. It's like, uh, I guess Capcom exported it wrong and put it up on the internet. <laughs> oh jeez. Man, what are they, Wizards of the Coast accidentally making like owl bears or whatever? Beholders common, uh, Creative Commons. Did you hear about that? No, that's great. Yeah, they're, they're, they're like, um, technically it's Creative Commons now because they referenced it in this thing they made. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that rules. Well, they exist. You still can't do the art. You can't do the exact depiction. This is a Winnie the Pooh situation. You got to check what they're wearing and make sure they don't match up too much. But we can call anything a beholder, even a magma spider. The old. <laughs> I think we need to start wrapping this up. Are there any other anecdotes or specific criticisms any of you wanted to have? I think I got all of mine out. I just need to reinforce the music. I expected it to be better. I don't know why it isn't. You know that little girl you meet at the beginning of the game? <laughs> yeah, Pathos. Uh... <laughs> yeah, that's her name, right? <laughs> it was driving me crazy how quickly they railroaded that her knowing you. Oh. Like it felt like so like unnatural. Like the connection? Yeah, the connection between the two characters. Like okay. it felt super unnatural and really rushed, and then they kill her. Immediately, I was like... Oh god, this is this happened in Final Fantasy 15 with an old man who hardly had a model you would consider done. Wait, it did? Yeah, there's this dude called Jared. They kill him off screen and he becomes the like mo momentum at the beginning of the game for you to go fight the Empire, which is insane because the Empire, you know, is bad. <laughs> well, of course they are. They killed Jared. <laughs> <laughs> which really sells how much that character mattered. Yup. Did they did they toss Jared off a cliff? <laughs> I wish. It, no, they kill him off screen, and you just. After a fun chapter, you then come into a hotel, and it, some of your party members really sad because Jared's dead. It's like, what in the world? So you're telling me the first five hours I experienced of that game is how that game keeps going? Because uh -huh. that's also how your hometown gets destroyed in 15. It's like, okay, or we got the hotel. I go to sleep. Oh, I wake up my dad's dead. <laughs> like, what's yeah, the you have you have to see the uh, you have to see all the compilation cutscene they made from fucking King's Glaive. <laughs> that was insane. Every single time writing my notes for this, every single time when I went to write Frey, mm -hmm. I started to write Aloy and had to stop. <laughs> Weird and abstract <laughs> and understandable. <laughs> because Aloy, fine. Not to my tastes, but fine. Frey really is that character executed wrong in every considered conceivable fashion. She reads books. Is she gonna show that? No. <laughs> <laughs> she likes shoes. Is she gonna collect them? No. She's got a giant ass sickle on her back. Why? Because witchcraft was part of the original art design of the game and that kind of went away in the middle of this <laughs> terrible project. At a certain point, the aesthetic became Sonic 06, where the people in town go, Hey. It's really good. I'm not sure if you notice. Uh, the NPCs in town are basked in shadow a lot of the time, so you can't see them when they're in the huts. I thought it was just, just their hats. Yeah, they had the shop, they had these shop stands, and it's just casting shadow on them. I'm like, yeah, that's probably for the best. I could go get some paper bags if that'll <laughs> really help you out here. Yeah. This game has, like, it's like a shitty streaming show. <laughs> It where is. simultaneously nothing happens, but it takes forever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, like they don't build up Frey and and Olivia. I guess is how you say her name because it's spelled Olivia. But I guess it's just Olivia. Mm -hmm. They don't build that up at all, and then she's just dead. The the first time you go back to town after the initial setup, she dies. Yeah, it's really yeah. terrible. They. Like, I thought that was going to be a developed across the game thing because I didn't play Final Fantasy 15 long enough to figure out they're not into that over there. Right. <laughs> What's that? I'm sorry. He's, he's right. Like, the second time you go back, she's dead. And right before you go in, you know, they're like, the this will start the next leg of Frey's journey. Are you sure you want to continue? And I'm thinking of all the follow the cat and terrible NPC encounter detours. It's going to wipe off the map. So I, I literally said out loud, don't threaten me with a good time and pushed <laughs> in through that door. How many times they pop that pop-up up is insane. 
Oh, yeah. They pop it up at least like 10 or 15 times throughout the game. No, it's more than that because there are like 20 chapters on paper and they do it multiple times per chapter even. I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah, that, that same pop-up is in Final Fantasy 15 as well, but they use it like twice. They're not going to write shit you could do at different points in the story. <laughs> right? And just, but yet they feel the need to tell you you're going to miss out on content that no one on Earth wants to play. <laughs> um, Did you go talk to the bartender during the post game? Uh, during the post game, no. I, I went up to the bartender and he's like, hey, like, let's finish our conversation we were having about how you liked Sapal. Or were we talking about that? <laughs> and then they go on with this dialogue that may have something to do with the detour you may or may not have done that these fucking hacks wrote. Wow. 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 This whole story, like the ending of this just has a real, we did it, Patrick. We saved the city. <laughs> feeling to yeah. it because <laughs> the problem isn't fixed because they have to be able to have a post game mm -hmm. which i hate that and everybody still currently alive can fit in one small room <laughs> yes yeah this uh this game feels like wasted potential at numerous sides and i don't even mean like this could have been an amazing game it could have been a good game could have been amazing <laughs> i have to reiterate that every i mean from the from the combat to the world design the setting even all of the plot points the writing uh -huh. if, if you were to list that shit on a legal pad in ballpoint <laughs> pen i would say fund this fund this game this is a generation defining fantasy epic but that's because in your head the way this game goes is it's a 90s film about traveling back into medieval times yeah, straight up to the very 90s final boss fight where you and the tantas are having your queen barrel moment and they're all standing behind you yes as you beam the back up. yeah i i honestly if they better landed the dialogue because i like i don't know how you feel about this specific end of the quipping but if they better landed the dialogue between you and the brace where you're talking about like oh this is a thing where i can come from and then he goes i don't understand that could have been fun but this feels like the least fun version of that ever executed in media mm -hmm. <laughs> it genuinely just like it something's off like it's not they won't commit to the bit one way or the other no phrase character arc which doesn't exist <laughs> um, no no that's yeah. not true aggro it, she's she not a character, character arc is she has the same character arc as every streaming service character and Dante from DMC the DMC where it's she didn't care and then she did. That's what they said at the end happened. Uh-huh. But the way it went, I like if you write it down, I would have loved it where she's like, I'm not going to go fight your crazy witch queens. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, this one marked a child. I'm going to go murder that bitch. Man, murdering that bitch made me feel bad. I don't want to do that anymore. And everybody's like, no, Frey, no. Keep murdering our god queens. Yeah. And she's like, no, I don't want to do that. One of them is your mom. No, I really don't want to do that. Right. Like, I'm like, wow, this would be really compelling if I wasn't having such a terrible time. <laughs> another another element that I expected to exist in the story is just weaving more of New York in. Mm -hmm. You know, get a little bit of that she's trying to live in the real world and keep slipping back to here because that could have been an interesting angle. But instead, it's we made New York three streets and we used it for a, a, a fake sequence later like i genuinely am floored by the lack of any character development in any world on any one we don't e we don't even get stuff like like frey going they, they have these things called bodegas and then and then cuff is like everyone has stores shut up <laughs> <laughs> we, we have this thing it's really great describes a bagel he's like yeah it's a bagel <laughs> Silence. She's like, yeah, but God, there's no better. joy in any of the dialogues in this game. Not one. No. It is. Yeah. 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 Uh, but we really need to wrap this up. So we're gonna do as per usual at the end of our spoiler cast and review, which this isn't a cast anymore. It's a fucking video. Oh. Uh, we're gonna just give our summary, judgmental paragraph, and then give it a score, uh, one at a time. And uh, let's go ahead and start with aggro. Forspoken turned out to be a joyless exercise in making bereft a long list of everything that I love. Uh, it was too expensive. It was a project that shouldn't have happened with tools that shouldn't exist. Three. Chris Wolfart. <laughs> yeah, this game shouldn't have shipped. 
Maybe if it had actually been a Final Fantasy title, they would have realized, oh, this would be this is massively brand damaging. Cancel it. That's true. Yeah. Uh, it, it it should have been canceled. I can't recommend this to anyone under any circumstances. I'm also giving this a three. Bob. Yeah, this game is by definition bootable. <laughs> but that doesn't mean you should ship it. <laughs> I'm also going to give it a three. Normally, with a lot of video games, I can imagine someone who enjoys any aspect of this. That was supposed to be aggro. <laughs> <laughs> I was right here. I'm not a small target. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, they missed. They missed for every human on Earth. I don't know who would like this. I certainly didn't. And at a certain point, you made something that is so simple as I kill enemies that get stronger very unengaging and very lacking. It, like, it's just not compelling in the least. Completely inert. It does nothing for my brain chemicals. And we're just drowning in a story told through cutscenes that look terrible and a story that's uninteresting and paper thin the entire way through. I'm also going to give this a three because it only crashed like once on me. <laughs> mm -hmm. It only crashed once. Guys, can anyone do the average on the the score? God, I can't do that in my head. Normally, I do it on the computer, and I just don't know what the what, what it works out to. Jesus. <laughs> anyway, that's gonna do it for this review. By the way, Agro is the one who spent seventy dollars. Uh, I was gonna buy it anyway. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, that's not as bad. <laughs> I was betrayed. The executive producers for this month on Gigaboo are Esme. Ely Broyles, Safe Man Fifth, Red Blade 27, Brendan O'Sullivan, The Plan, Super Tank, Very Best Plot, Iconic Bane, and Hakita Koyo Hanegawi Mu Kutmihara Wo Shoda Paro.